bless you with all the time and you're taking. <gasps> and if you want ah, it's so much so work. Please. Okay, so we were sent a very popular video. People asking me, is this truly balanced? So we will take a look at this raw video. These are the main ingredients that I am using. I have 10 pounds okay. of fresh chicken thighs. Chicken is great. Here, there's an added challenge, right? Because they want to make it as least expensive and as cheap as possible. This is five pounds. And this is five pounds. I also have a package of chicken hearts. I paid oh, awesome. Love chicken hearts for cats. Super important for, for raw food. To use some of them. And I have a container of chicken liver. Awesome. Off to a good start. Also, and we're only using some of these. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do oh. is weigh out the chicken hearts and the chicken livers. So I have enough for this recipe. Anything left over, I am going to freeze and I'll use it for the next time that I make homemade raw food for the cats. <gasps> and if you want ah, it's so much work, skin, like taking the skin off, off and, and then taking that. the bone off of half of them. But I mean, again, and it was based on... If you for this chicken skin, then obviously put it to good use. Broth. But make a broth with your chicken skin. This recipe. this recipe says to remove 25% of the bone from these chicken thighs. Okay. So each five So again, thighs are generally cheaper, especially because a lot of the weight goes into the bone, which humans don't eat. The skin off of but you need some of the bone for the cats. And so we're going to remove the bones from four of those pieces, okay. and that will be from 25%. As much meat as I can. <sighs> Bless you with all the time and you're then taking. Now that we're on the bottom, I just try to cut. Wow. Cut the rest of the bone free take the grinding attachment off and okay. then we're going to add some more ingredients to this ground yay more ingredients i am now adding four raw egg yolks you don't want to add the egg whites because raw egg whites can block the absorption of some b vitamins in cats not true not true at all you can use raw egg whites the enzyme she's talking about avidine is actually deactivated very readily very easily in cats and dogs so you can use egg whites, no problem at all. You can cook them if you want, or you can give them raw, it's completely fine. Right, monkey? Mm, Dr. Monkey? But the yolks are fine, they're very high in nutrients. Yes, yolks are fantastic. <laughs> so cute, just pop I'm them. adding two capsules of taurine. These are 1,000 uh, milligrams. That's very interesting. Tori, I mean, add it in, no problem. But if you're using raw meat, especially with those chicken hearts, you don't need to add taurine in. There's a lot of taurine in hearts. Uh, and actually, the smaller the heart, the more taurine concentration there is, right? Chicken hearts are actually really dense in taurine compared to other hearts or other sources of meat. If it's cooked meat, then taurine goes down rapidly. Or if the meat was frozen for a long time, then taurine starts to decrease as well over time. But it's taurine, not a bad thing. So I'm adding 2,000 milligrams. So raw meat has a lot of taurine in it, specifically the chicken hearts we put in here. And but the I feel like there's gonna be a but of the chicken thighs. Those all have taurine in them. Um, and I've spoken to my vet about this. About do you need to add additional taurine when you're making homemade food with raw meat? He feels that you don't need to add the extra taurine because there is the naturally occurring taurine in the meat. He also acknowledges that there are other vets that definitely think you do need to add the extra taurine. Because and the recipe I'm they were taught by to add extra kibble people. Taurine. Uh, some people feel that it's not harmful to the cats. It's not. Other people feel that nobody really knows if it will be harmful no, in it's not the harmful. long run since it Ooh. is an additional supplement and it's not the naturally occurring taurine. So sometimes it's better to err on the side of caution. This recipe includes it, so I am going to include it also. What I normally do is I just break open a taurine capsule and I sprinkle it on. And I'll do it with the other one also. And this is all going to get mixed together. Yep. Just mix it in, open it up. This is all good. Adding additional taurine is just basically like having an insurance policy just to make sure that there's enough in Fine. the meat for the cats. There normally should be, but some people just like that extra boost. 
This recipe also calls for 4,000 uh, Fish oil, yes, girl, oil. get it, girl. Good. Different it's so important. Supplements. The one I'm currently using is so this Grizzly Salmon Plus Omega 369 Food Okay, so stop it. Dog. So stop that and just go for the three. 369 is such good marketing because they can add in less expensive oils in there and sell it to you at more price because you think it's more complete. Uh, just give omega-3. You can even buy human-grade ones. It's cheaper than most of the pet ones. And cats, one pump has a thousand milligrams, so I'm adding... Okay, at least she did her calculations. Pumps. So, awesome. I actually added five because some of those were not full pumps. They were not I full pumps. I also make sure that my cats eat fish-based food one day a week to make sure that they're getting a good amount of omega-3s in their diet that and way. And vitamin D. So I'll feed them some canned sardines, some canned salmon, that kind of food. Good. Now we want 200 milligrams of vitamin B complex. So Great, vitamin B, 100 milligram very capsule. important. And I'm gonna open these up and sprinkle these in also. Luckily, cats have low requirements of B vitamins overall. So giving like two pills like that, you can kind of feel that you're doing good enough. You could also put yeast instead. Keep going with the supplements. You're missing, the a, you're missing a few. For one and a half teaspoons of light salt for the iodine content. But I use kelp ah. instead. Oh, this is and going great. Add two teaspoons of kelp. Kelp this is fantastic is for like iodine. Like Obviously, don't overdo it. Half teaspoon, so I'm going to add four of these. Like five grams per kilogram of meat usually makes sense for the, for the iodine content. And for adult cats, it also gives so sodium kelp and chlorine. It contains iodine. It also contains some calcium, phosphorus, salt, mm, not really. and potassium. Yes, the but the calcium, not a significant source. For 200 IU of vitamin E, and it says to use a powdered form of vitamin E. Hmm. I have not found a powdered form around here. I know you could buy it online. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, you yet. can buy it Other online. Other people use this liquid vitamin E, yeah. and this is what I've been using. That's a fine. A quarter teaspoon of this is about 400 IU, so I'm probably going to put in about an eighth a. of a teaspoon. Cats don't have very high vitamin E requirements, uh, but they still need it. You could also take some sunflower seeds and sprout them, germinate them, then grind them or blend them into powder the and then mix it in. Put my gloves on and get my hands dirty mixing this all Mix up. it up. I want to see if there's any other ingredients. Or whatever you want. When they were living outside. Okay, so she's also adding in barley grass, wheat grass, and alfalfa. Fine, you that's great. Feral cats living in nature. Uh, they love to eat grass. They do eat some grass. And this is they the need the fiber for their gut, though. They need a lot less, but they still need it. It has for them. It has some vitamin A, some vitamin C, vitamin K, calcium, iron, sodium, and potassium. So but you're not adding a lot, so it won't be a significant source of any of those nutrients, I don't feel. They require animal protein as the main part of their diet. 100%. When living in nature, they do get 5%, maybe even 10% of their diet from plant matter. When they eat their prey, they eat the entire contents of the digestive tract, which often contains pre-digested or semi-digested plant material and they also do chew on plants. That's why a lot of inside cats love to chew on house plants because they have an innate desire to eat greens. It's really important to provide- 10% sounds fresh like a, a very high number. I've never read that. 10% of, of, of a cat's diet being from, from plants. Eating lettuce. So oh. this is why I really like to supplement oh. the food that I make with powdered grass. So yeah. in this case, I'm gonna be using one scoop and the cost of this scoop would be 90 cents. 90 cents for a scoop. <laughs> That's half the price of the food already. Obviously, if you can get the supplements on sale or cheaper, if you have a coupon, then it brings the Non-branded usually lower. helps. I also Gosh. like to add one or two <gasps> cups of some kind of vegetables. Sometimes I'll use some canned pureed pumpkin. Other times Pumpkin's I'll steam great. some vegetables and puree them myself. That's Other great too. I'll very, very finely grind uh, some vegetables. I've done that with zucchini in the past. The cats like that. Yeah. I've done it with butternut squash. Yes. The cats like that. Yes. Um, today I have some carrots. Yeah. And I also have some zucchini. And I've steamed, steamed these. them. So what I'm Great. Do Don't give it I'm raw. I'm going to puree these in a little food processor. <sighs> and then I'm going to put the pureed vegetables 
into the cabbage. This is great because I was thinking so there's not a lot of potassium in this diet, and I think that this will make sure that then there's more than enough potassium. Carnivores. Other people say it is good for them because it is. No, good it is a hundred percent good for them. Don't listen to anyone who says only feed meat, and nothing else. Nonsense. In the vegetable matter, basically opinions are very mixed. They are not the opinions. This is science. A different opinion. <laughs> if you read books about homemade cat food that were published through the years, basically the recipes are always changing. Always Even changing. Every year we're learning new and more things about cats. That always changing. How they work. So for me, I choose to add these extras. By okay. all means, they are not part of the basic recipe. You don't have to add them. Okay. Here are the pureed veggies. Lovely. So mix it in. Also. See? And see when it's mixed in, I mean, you can barely tell that there's two cups of veggies in there, and it makes such a difference for your cat's long-term health. I do not health. add any water to this, but I do add water to it before for serving. I serve it. It's texture. Just Texture's so important for cats. Without the water. Okay, well that was awesome. She did a lot of work to research this on her own. This is awesome. Really, 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 really great. I do see a few deficiencies here. Nothing huge. Because it's chicken and it's chicken liver, it's all chicken based, then generally iron may be an issue. Chicken is the hardest one to balance because we know that it's overall, comparatively to other meats, it's lower in zinc, copper, phosphorus. So I'm glad that there's the liver. I'm glad there was the heart. That fixes a lot of issues. There are still some, some things that I'm not convinced are there in good enough amounts to meet the NRC standards, the lowest standards for cats. A manganese also, the omega-3 was added in. Again, I don't think you need to spend that money to buy a branded omega-369. I think giving fish regularly uh, more than once a week would help give the vitamin D and it would help to give the omega-3 and some of the B vitamins as well, although there was a B vitamin supplement there. So I'm also not convinced for the vitamin D, which would also be in the fish. Let me think about what food ingredients we can easily add in into this diet to make it fully balanced and complete for your cat's long-term health. So give me a minute and I'll be right back. Oh, hi there. I got everything ready in order to make sure that this diet is completely balanced in order to make sure that it hits at least the minimum requirements for NRC standards for adult cats for long-term health because we want it to be perfectly nutritious every single time, not just some of the time. So the number one thing I would recommend for this diet is to take the chicken liver and instead give duck liver. Now I know that this video had like a, a budget aspect to it, which is why duck liver probably wasn't an option. Depends where you stay, depends where you live. So depending on where you stay, maybe duck liver is not a very cheap option, but I'm thinking outside of the realm and focusing on the nutrients. Uh, so duck liver would make such a big difference because it is a lot higher in iron, it's higher in copper. It's overall much more nutrient dense than your average chicken liver. You can also put more. Like the amount of chicken liver that was used in this video was I think quite low. So giving about 300 grams of duck liver instead of that chicken liver would make a big, big, big difference in meeting the requirements. Even for zinc, things that are very hard to find in chicken, duck usually is good. So mixing those two proteins together is always recommended, especially to hit that. Those minerals are just so tough. The copper and the zinc, is it, it drives me crazy trying to balance recipes, especially those made from chicken or those made from pork, it's so tough. So on top of that, the others are a bit more suggestions. I think that this will already match most of the, of the missing nutrients, the duck liver. Um, but I do think that you could just use the whole egg. You don't need to just give the yolk. And I do think you could add in the eggshell as well because I don't know if that was enough calcium. So adding a little bit more eggshell and the membrane inside is really good for your cat's joints. No harm in, adding, in giving the whole egg with the shell. Um, then you got your calcium included. There was bones that were used, so bones is also an amazing source of calcium and everything. If you need to add in some extra calcium because of the amount of bones, then you can use eggshell or not. But peel off the membrane and always put that in the food. Always, 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 always. For the omega-3, um, instead of giving that omega-369 supplement, I really think you should just give fish every day. You can consider giving some salmon, about 100 to 120 grams for that whole batch diet that she made. Or you can also use canned sardines, canned anchovies, canned mackerel uh, in water, and then you rinse them off, of course. You can blend them all up because there are some soft bones inside. Most cats are fine with it. But if your cat has never had it before, then chop it up small and then give small pieces first. And the reason why I'm a big supporter of using these in the diet every day or at least five times a week is not only for the omega-3, which your pet needs every day, but also for the vitamin D, uh, which will be fine in good amounts and it also provides some zinc but also manganese especially in the canned sardine. So those are something that is maybe not necessary all the time like she said but I would suggest it to be more often or just switch to maybe a higher quality like cod liver oil 
uh, or just a pure omega-3 that also has vitamin D inside. Because vitamin E was added to the diet, I don't think we need to add that in. But some of those veggies that were inside, I love that she put veggies. I would take about half of them, half of that amount, and put some leafy greens like spinach or kale or something else. Kale, maybe the taste is a bit strong, like cabbage, maybe the taste is a bit strong for a cat. Uh, spinach usually does the job because it will help to give in some more vitamin K um, and some more manganese. But more importantly, spinach has these very cool compounds that have been shown to help reduce inflammation in cats long term, not just for joints, but like overall inflammation, which is also known to help beat, fight, prevent cancer as well. I'm a big fan of spinach for cats. Of course, you want to cook it, you want to blend it, just like she did. So this is more of a suggestion. Out of everything she did, the only thing that I think is absolutely necessary is those chicken livers, switch it to duck and put a little bit more, 300, even 350 grams should be okay for the total amount. A lot of people are afraid to put more than 5% of liver on a diet because of what's been like online. That is completely false. Especially if it's duck, pork, chicken liver, you can go above 5%, absolutely, because it's not just about the percentage of liver, it's about the other ingredients and the diet as a whole. So in this balance, with all these ingredients, then 350 grams of liver absolutely is okay. If we're talking about beef or lamb, then that's a whole different story, but we're not. So I hope this helped. Overall, this diet was awesome. Uh, you did such amazing work. I just think that with these little tweaks, you can have something that goes from like bare minimum to something that is optimal for long term. I just hope it doesn't blow your budget because of the duck liver. Sorry about that. I hope this helped. By all means, use this diet and then add, mix this in just to make sure that it's fully balanced according to NRC. And beyond that, comment below. Let me know what other videos you want me to review and let you know if they're balanced or not and how to fix them. And then follow us on socials, Instagram and TikTok. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.